Hi and welcome back to the channel. As you can see from the title, today our Bible study is Who is Jesus? And if you've seen in other videos, I've introduced um, God, God of creation, the God of the universe by name Yahuwah because I thought it was important that we understand that God, there's only one true God and that's the Father of Jesus. But today we're going to talk about who is Jesus. But before we get started, as usual, if you haven't already, I need you to subscribe, hit the post notification bell, and smash the like button, all right? And share the video if you so desire. I would appreciate it so much. So let's get started. Before we get started, I need to tell you, this must be in a very important study, and I know that it is, because the enemy has done everything uh, to keep this video from being done. And I'm just trying it again because um, I've just gone through a lot of changes to get the video completed. But we'll talk about all the, we're not even gonna talk about what I've been through because that's given the enemy too much credit. And so we're gonna get this done today. All right, thank you. All right, so let's get started. So who did Jesus claim to be? That's the question, who did he even claim to be? In John 10, all right, let me say this as well. I'm on my phone and I can't put these video uh, verses up for you, but I would appreciate it if you would grab your Bibles and read along with me or take notes because we have to become like the Bereans and check behind everybody, not just me, your preacher, your pastor, anybody. Check to see because I could be reading a verse wrong or quoting it wrong or anything, but just check always in your own scriptures. All right. All right, so now let's get started. Who did Jesus say he was? Or who did he claim to be? Let's put it like that. John 10, 36 says, Say ye of him, whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. Now, this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. He's asking them, are you saying that I'm blaspheming because I say that I'm the son of God? All right. So what did God the Father say regarding the identity of Jesus? So Jesus is saying he's the son of God. Who did the Father say that Jesus was? What was his identity? In Matthew 3, 16 and 17, it reads like this. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Father sitting high on his throne in heaven speaks out, declaring, Jesus to be his son. Matthew 17, 5 says, While yet, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. This is at the Mount of Transfiguration. Again, the Father sitting in heaven speaks and says that Jesus is his son. Now, who did the disciples understand Jesus to be? You know, in the, in the Hebrew culture, you needed two or three witnesses before establishment of a good thing. So we've got Jesus declaring himself to be the son of God. We've got the father, Yahuwah, also declaring him to be his son. And now let's see what the disciples understood Jesus, who the disciples understood Jesus to be. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, it says, He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, or the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Son of the living God. Just know that Christ means anointed one. All right? In the Hebrew, it's Messiah. John eleven twenty seven. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, 
the Messiah, the Son of God, which should come into the world. I can't remember if this is Mary or Martha, but they believed that he was the Messiah, the Son of God. The Messiah was to come. The Messiah was the anointed one. And he was to be not only come as the Messiah, but he was actually God's son. In Matthew 14, 33, it reads like this. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the son of God. So the disciples were in a, in a, a stressful situation in the, in the boat, uh, in the storm, and they recognized that Jesus was the son of God. Thou art the son of God. Not was and is to come. He is the son of God. Of God, but they recognize this. In Acts 9 20, it reads like this And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. This is what they preached after Pentecost that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, did the fallen angels know Jesus was the Son of God? These demons that are around here and those demons that fell out of heaven, that third that was kicked out of heaven. Did they know that Jesus was the son of God? Let's find out. Let's turn to Luke 4, verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it should be made bread. When Jesus was in the wilderness and was being tempted of the devil, he asked, if you are, see, because he doesn't look like he remember him looking when he was uh, before he was incarnated as the son of man. He's now a human. So he doesn't have his divine spirit form. So he doesn't recognize him as such, but he knows something's up with this uh, person that has come. And so he's saying, if you're the son of God, then sh show me your power. Luke eight twenty eight. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice, he said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. So this devil knew that he was the son of the most high, Yah. All right. And he didn't say, Oh, th uh, thou be uh, God. They're all saying, You're the son of God. Mark 5, 7. Now hear me clearly. I need you to understand who Jesus is. This is what this Bible study is about. And this study, the devil did not want me to do. He did everything to keep this from being done. So I need you to follow along and pray and pay attention. Okay. Mark 5, 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou tormentest me not. Again, these demons and these uh, are all referring to him as the son of the most high. And remember, we said in our other videos, the most high is the one true God, the father, Yahuwah. So Satan and his angels knew before their fall that Jesus, he wasn't known by Jesus, that wasn't his name, was the son of God. All right. And now he's challenging him about this very fact now that he's here on earth. Now, who else is referred to as the son of God in scripture? Let's see. Luke 3, 38. Who else is referred to as the son of God? Luke 3, 38. It says, which was the son of Enos? which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was known as the son of God. Adam was the son of God by creation. Angels were sons of God by creation. You and I can be sons and daughters, children of God by adoption. 1 John 3 Verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, 
because it knew him not. Right? So Romans 8.15 says, we are sons by adoption. Now don't let that fool you if somebody hears this. Sons, all mankind, we can be male and female. He created the he, them. We are can be children of the Most High God. You can be a daughter. I'm a daughter of the Most High. You can be a son or daughter of the Most High. Now, how is Christ the Son of God? How is Christ the Son of God? In 1 John 4, verse 9, it says, In this was manifested that the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. I want you to know, you look, look it up if you don't believe me, just look up begotten. It means born. Okay, not created. It means born. But because God sent his only begotten, his, and, that, and you can't leave that word out. I notice in some of these new versions are just leaving his only son. Well, remember, we see that Adam was a son. We know that the angels are sons. We know that we can become sons. But to say that he was the only son, it was not enough. You have to say he was the only begotten son of Yah. Okay? The only begotten son of the Father. And we say this verse all the time. We learn it from Nehi, John 3, 16. But do we really understand what it's saying? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God giving his only begotten son indicates to me, and it should as well to you, that he had a son to give. The son was given before the incarnation. He gave his son at the beginning. Okay, he had a son to give. He didn't pretend to give a son. He's not lying to us. He's not m making up stories for us. He's telling us the truth. And either you believe him or you believe man. But I'm going to stick with the scriptures. I hope you will do the same. When did Jesus become the son of man? Because you know he had those two titles. He's the son of God. He's also the son of man. When did he become the son of man? In Galatians 4.4, 4. Galatians 4.4 4 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. And in Luke 1.31, it says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. So in the incarnation, when he was born of Mary, that's when he became the son of man, when he became uh, the God, uh, part man and part divine. OK, because his father was he was the seed of his father and the seed of, uh, of Mary. So he was um, both human and divine. And his Hebrew name is Yahshua and Yah is salvation is what that means. Yah is salvation. Um, when was Christ begotten of the Father? Now, this is a, a good question. When was he begotten of the Father? If you say, Diane, he wasn't created and begotten means born. What are you talking about? When was he begotten of the Father? This is the Old Testament. Ma Micah 5, 2. Micah 5, 2. It says, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be a ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Now, I need you to know that if you look, at, look this word up, going forth means origin. Origin is a beginning. Whose origin is have been from old, from everlasting. If you look in your margins, some margins will show from days of eternity, eternity past. So far back, we don't have, there's no way we can measure how far back that was. But it was in the days of antiquity. That's how his, when he was begotten of the Father. We, all before any creation was being done, he was begotten of the Father. 
Now we're going to take our time and read something very important. And it's Proverbs 8, 22 to 30. I really want you to go back and read this one and pay attention very closely. What happened in the days of eternity? This gives us a very good clue. All right. Now, remember in the Old Testament, I, I think I explained this before. When you see the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, um, that is uh, referring to God, the Father, Yahuwah. OK, and if you see L-O-R-Ds, that's somebody else or it might be referring to the Christ or, you know, you see that word being used. But when it's L-O-R-D, capital, it's speaking about the Father. And I want to make that clear so that when I read this, the first part of this, you'll see the difference between the two beings. All right. I hope that makes sense. So let's begin. The Lord Yahuwah possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was when there were no depths. I was brought forth when there was no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills was I brought forth while as yet he had not made the earth nor fields nor the highest parts of the dust of the world when he prepared the heavens I was there when he set a compass upon the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was with him as one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him that is such an awesome passage I, I, I just know that we haven't paid attention uh, to the scriptures for those of us who have been in church for years maybe and never read never made any sense out of this or never probably even read it I want you to go back and read it. This is giving us a clue of when, um, what happened back in the days of eternity when uh, Christ was begotten of the Father. And it's such a sweet, uh, he was brought forth. He was as one uh, brought up with him. He was his delight. I just think that he was always rejoicing before the Father. I just think that's so beautiful. Okay, and we know that if someone tells you, well, this this uh, book of Proverbs eight is talking about wisdom. Yes, it's referred to as wisdom. But who is wisdom? Do you think wisdom in and of itself is an entity? Do you think wisdom is tangible? This Patrick is speaking under the title of wisdom. But who and what is wisdom? In first Corinthians one twenty four and 30 and Colossians two, three. Go look it up. Christ is is the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. So Jesus points his reader to the duration before creation of anything as a time when he was brought forth and possessed of the Father. Now, was Jesus referred to as a son before Bethlehem. And now this is the key because some people are saying, oh, he only became and was called the son of God uh, in this tricky kind of sense or metaphor uh, at Bethlehem. But is that's what the scripture is saying? And let's see, Proverbs again. This is Proverbs. So this is before uh, Christ came to Mary. So this was the Hebrew scriptures and what they knew. Okay. Proverbs 30 verse 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who's gone up or come down? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters as a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? 
and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? So before Bethlehem, this verse indicates to us that God had a son. Do you know it's saying, what is his name and what is his son's name? So there was two beings, the father and the son, Yahuwah and his son. All right. If you can tell, but just pay attention because the verse is specifically saying before Bethlehem, the father had a son and he had a son to give. Daniel 3, 25 says, he answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Now, this is the King James version. If you look at other versions, and I think they're probably a little bit more accurate. That was not something that the they were looking for the Messiah, but they wasn't necessarily uh, knowing about the son. It was not a part of the culture uh, in the scripture. So that's not something the book of Daniel deals with. What most what what Nebuchadnezzar was saying was, he looks, the fourth looks like the son of the gods just because of his mindset. Okay. But he knew what he was seeing was a divine being. That's the point here. He saw the fourth one that was a divine being. But Psalms uh, 2 verse 12 says, kiss the son. And this is not S-U-N, it's S-O-N. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, bless all they that put their trust in him. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. So here we see that they all knew there was a son. All right. There was a son. There is a son. During the incarnation, meaning when um, Christ became man, when did Jesus teach that he came forth from the father. All right. So let's listen to this very carefully. So during the time when he becomes the son of man, when he came to earth, when did Jesus teach that he came forth from the father? John eight forty two. John eight forty two. All right. Again, John eight forty two. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would have loved me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he has sent me. John 16, 27 says, For the father himself loveth you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Now this verse right here, I want you to go back and read chapters 14 and 16. This is the parable of the comforter. Most people don't call it a parable, but Jesus did. And so I believe him and his word. And he uh, was talking about him coming out from God and f being brought forth. And the disciples finally got it. And he says, Oh, so now you have believed that I came out from God. That's something that he's asking you to believe as well. Is it important for us to believe that Jesus is the real literal son of God? Ask yourself that. Is it really important? First John 2, 22 and 23 says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. You must have the Father and the Son. The Father loves you. And Jesus, his Son, loves you. And you and I, we both, we need them both. And if you deny that Jesus is the Son and ignore the Father, you are Antichrist. I know most of you are waiting for the Antichrist, but you are Antichrist in any denomination and anybody else that teaches against the Father and His Son. John says, you're Antichrist. 1 John 5, 10 and 11 says, He that believeth on the Son of God 
has this witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. You're making God a liar when you do not believe that God gave a son and that Jesus was a real son and he was the son of God before he came. That's a serious um, thing because so many people in this world are denying both the father and the son today. In John 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's so serious. Brothers and sisters, friends and family, if you're professing to know Jesus and you don't acknowledge him as the Son of God and you're ignoring the Father, the wrath of God is waiting for you. And I hate, I mean, that saddens my heart to even think about it. But so many people are in this world, in this delusion. And that's why we're saying, who is Jesus? Is it important to know who he is? Yes, because the world has even denied, the, the church of these Christians have denied people the truth about God. So this is very important. I want you to go back and read these these verses. John 20, verse 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. The fact that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, this is the gospel. This is the truth, you all. This is so true. And the devil doesn't want you to know it. Why did the Jews kill Christ? Have you ever thought about that? Why did the Jews kill Christ? Matthew 26, 63 to 65, it says, But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need we of a witness? Behold, now ye have heard this blasphemy. What was considered blasphemy? That Jesus is the Son of God. That you deny that Jesus is the Son of God and you think it's a metaphor and you think it's just a trick that God is just playing games with you and he really didn't have a son. that They're just playing roles. You are committing blasphemy. Jesus is the Son of God. In John 19, 7, it says, The Jews answered him, We have a law and by our law you ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. Jesus died because he was the Son of God and would not deny it even if he had to die. He would not deny it. And some of us are going to have to make a stand on whether you believe that Jesus is the Son of God in these last days or give up your life. Are you willing to do that? Do you know him? And listen, he would rather die. Jesus would rather die than deny his true sonship. That's really important. That is so important to know. What is promised to those who receive Jesus as the Son of God? What is promised? There's a promise to you, and we're going to conclude with this. John 1, 12. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So what is promised to those that believe that Jesus is the son of God? Power to become sons of God ourselves. Brothers, sisters, friends, and family, whoever watches this video, let me tell you, if you're toying between accepting Jesus as your savior, I pray that you will do so now. I pray that you will read these scriptures. I pray that you go back and read even the book of John prayerfully and carefully 
for, to understand who Jesus is, because that's what the book of John and his uh, smaller books uh, deal with, the sonship of Christ. I need you to do that. And if you're toying with the idea of giving yourself to him, please don't delay. The devil did everything in his power to keep this video from uh, being done. And, you know, I just sit here and talk with you and share with you on my phone. But trust me, if I could tell you all the things that he did to keep this video um, from being posted, just ridiculous. So I know that somebody out there, whether you profess to know him and you know that you're not living your life in harmony with his will and you need to rededicate yourself to him, please do. Please give yourself to him anew. He'll receive you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter if you've been uh, like a Laodicean, you know, lukewarm and just going through the motions. Please, please, I, I beg you, give Jesus a chance. He is the son of God and his sonship has all the divinity, all the fullness of the Godhead is in him. OK, he can be worshiped because he is the son of God. He can be your savior. He can be your father. He can be everything you need along with his father, Yahuwah, the one and only true God. May God bless you all. I pray that what all that I went through to get this video up for you today, that you would go over these uh, scriptures and understand it is important to know who Jesus is. I just thank you for listening. And I just pray the grace and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all until we meet again in the next video. Shalom.